Welcome students, welcome back to the Close Reading Cooperative, the podcast and literary analysis for English majors. I'm Christopher Hanlon of Eastern Illinois University, and with me today is Jeffrey Insko of Oakland University. Right, welcome to the podcast. Hi Chris, Jeffrey. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think it's really great that you guys have this project Thanks. to make uh, students into more attentive readers. The thing I don't Thank get you. is, why do you call it close reading? I mean, why do you want to close yeah. reading? I would think yeah, that you would want it, students no, Jeff, to open no, no, up no, their no, readings. Jeff, this is the, the name issue. It's not close reading, it's close reading. Uh, it's Chris, I get it, I'm making a pun. <laughs> it's, it's simply a pun, right? I mean, a pun is simply a play on words that it exploits the fact that some words have multiple meanings or the fact that sometimes words sound alike but have different meanings. Right. Like, hey, Jeff, have you heard uh, about Stalin's grave? Sounds like a communist plot to me. Yeah, Get that's it? exactly plot. right. Great. <laughs> oh, here's one, right? Yeah. I mean, writing with a broken pencil is pointless. Pointless, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A joke like that ought to have a statue of limitations <laughs> on it, to be honest with you. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Chris, do you know why worms are usually alone? Oh. Why are worms usually alone, Jeff? Because they live in apples, not pears. Pears, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except this is the this is the issue with puns, Jeff. I mean, those are those are terrible jokes. I mean, puns are puns are off. Puns puns are wretched. I mean, this this is why Dryden said that that uh, you know puns are the lowest form of wit. Well, it is true that puns tend toward the crude and sophomoric, yeah. but it's also the case that a lot of the greatest writers uh, used puns, and puns we can think of as kind of a gateway to more sophisticated uses of language. Well, give me an example. Yeah. An ex okay, here's an example from Henry David Thoreau, right? Okay. Talking about living in the woods in Walden. He said, I consider that I enhance the value of the land by squatting on it. Get it? So, that so on the one hand, he's punning on the idea that he's living on land that doesn't belong to him. He's a squatter. On the other hand, he pooped in the woods. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay, so he's, yeah, okay, okay, I get, I get it. Okay, so, the, well, like, I, I can think of another example okay. from, from John Donne for yeah. instance. So right, John, John Donne really enjoyed making puns. And, and in his famous poem, The Flea, right, he, he, he's trying to convince the, the, his female listener to have sex with him, right? And he's using this device of the flea. And at one point he says, you know, look to this flea. You know, the flea is that in which uh, we, yea, more than married are. But see, it could be married as M-E-R-R -R or M-A-R-R. -R. Exactly. And in fact, in the 1633 edition, he spelled it that last way. So if we are more than married, right, the virgin mother of Christ, then we're, we're more than virgins. We've, we've had sex before, so we might as well have sex now. So it's exploiting yeah. the fact that those two words sound alike, but have completely different meanings. That's what a pun does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so I guess the important thing, though, is that our students look for some puns. And recognize puns when they come across them. So your job for this week is to, in your reading, find a pun or two, bring them to class, and talk about playing with words. That's, that's a worthy goal. Uh, so until next time, uh, this is the Close Reading Cooperative, signing off.